Thank you all so much for joining us today for the introductory press conference for Coach Kenny Brooks. We'll get started with a brief opening statement from Mitch Barnhart. Thank you, Kimmy. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. It's a great day to be a Wildcat. It's uh, wonderful. It's great to have everybody here. I'd like to thank a couple people that uh, sort of assisted in the search and walked us through all this journey that's uh, led us to today. And so Rachel Baker and Tiffany Massey, I thank you so much for all you guys did. And, and it's sort of... Uh, as we began the search, um, Rachel walked into the office one day and she says, if I could have one person lead our program, it'd be this guy. And she shows me a video of a press conference where he describes the beauty of the game of women's basketball very vividly after one of their games. Uh, it caught my attention about the way he spoke of his players, about the way he spoke of the game and what it meant to him, his demeanor, same on the sidelines as it was in the press conference. Passionate, loving, a care for something that he deeply adored, the game of basketball. And uh, he has done that remarkably well over an amazing career, and I'm going to chronicle of a few things that are just impressive as heck as you begin to look at his resume. And most of you have read this. Um, he's our ninth women's basketball coach at Kentucky. Over 500 career wins as a head basketball coach at James Madison, where he's the winningest coach in the history of the school. 180 wins at Virginia Tech. 11 regular season and tournament conference championships. 10 NCAA tournament appearances and one Final Four. Six WNBA draft picks since 2015. Seven total picks. 18 20 win seasons in 22 total seasons as a head coach includes 18 20 plus win seasons in his last 19 seasons as a head coach, the lone exception being the COVID year. Guided players to seven conference player of the year honors. In the last two seasons combined, Brooks went 2-0 against Tennessee and 3-0 against Louisville. <laughs> Four-time CAA coach of the year, known best for developing players. And if you've watched any of his teams, he has taken young women from stage to stage to stage in the development of the game to the spot where they succeed in an incredibly high elite level in women's basketball. Graduate of James Madison in 1992, played four years under Lefty Drizel. His family, beautiful wife Chrissy, and Kendall, who's not here. I think she's FaceTime. I don't know what she's got going here. Where, where she was trying to FaceTime earlier. We got Chloe, Hunter, son-in-law, Gabby, Kinsley is the granddaughter. Kinsley, raise your hand. There we are, right there. And we're so thrilled to have all of them here. Um, it is an incredible honor to introduce our ninth women's basketball coach at the University of Kentucky, Kenny Brooks. Thank you, Mitch Barnhart. We'll move now to an opening statement from head coach Kenny Brooks. Wow, thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, uh, but it's an honor to be the head women's basketball coach here at Kentucky. And, um, you know, it sounds surreal, but when you think about Kentucky, you think about basketball. And for me, um, when, I, when I was approached about a situation that could possibly be with Kentucky basketball. I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking. Uh, we, we had a wonderful thing going, uh, what we did. At Virginia Tech, you know, it was very, very, very special. Uh, and what we did, we created a buzz for women's basketball that is much needed and much deserved. So I was extremely proud about that. And uh, our fight, you know, through those years, we needed to win basketball games, but we needed to bring awareness to women's basketball. And I'm looking forward to that challenge here. I know Big Blue Nation is very passionate about their Wildcats. And I need each and every one of you 
and your efforts, your support in many, many ways to make this happen here at Kentucky. When I got to Virginia Tech, you know, I felt like it was a sleeping giant. And as I continued to research everything about Kentucky, I know that the academics here are wonderful. I know that the fan base is very passionate. I, I know that resources will allow you to get to a level where you can compete with anyone. I know it's in the rich history of the SEC and the SEC's leadership and where it's going, you wanna be aligned with that to try to create something very, very special. And so when I added all that up, what I came up with was it was gonna be a sleeping giant and it just needs to be awakened. And, and I'm here uh, and I'm, I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna work. As Mitch said, uh, we're, going to, we're going to fight, uh, we're going to develop, uh, but we're gonna put a product out there that you are going to be very, very proud of. And I'm not, sh I'm not just saying you're gonna be proud of them in Memorial, but if you see them in Target, we have Target, right? Yes. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you see them in Kroger, uh, wherever you see them, you're gonna be able to approach them and you're gonna be very, very proud that they represent the University of Kentucky. And that's how you build a program, that's how you build awareness for women's basketball that these young ladies need and deserve. And when we're able to get to that point, we're gonna capitalize on it. So I'm extremely excited to get to work. Um, I cannot wait. I see the young ladies in the second row and I'm looking forward to meeting each and every one of them to share our philosophies. And our philosophies are gonna be, we're gonna be a team. Uh, in this day and age, there's sometimes, there, there, there's a lot of individualism going on. But if you wanna continue, you wanna, you wanna compete for championships, you need to be a great team. You know, and that starts with you, the fan, the support. Uh, each and every young lady that we bring in, they're gonna be, have to be willing and able for sacrifices for each other, celebrating each other's successes. And to me, those are recipes for success. And those are things that we have done throughout my career, uh, going to James Madison, building that program, going to Virginia Tech, building that program. We haven't done it with just one player or two players here or there. We've done it with the team concept. And that's something that we will definitely endure here at Kentucky. And in my opinion, it's the only way that it can get done in this day and age because it's very, very competitive. Uh, the SEC is the best women's basketball league in the country. Uh, and it just got stronger with the additions uh, that we brought in. So I'm very, very excited to be with the leadership. Uh, I thank Mitch for this opportunity. Uh, he made it easy for me, you know, and just, just being with him in a short time, I felt the connection. I felt, you know, his passion for women's sports in general, but for the women's basketball program and where he wanted it to go. Uh, I thought our philosophies aligned and it was something that had to be very, very special to me. Uh, President Capilouto, the opportunity for this is just magnificent and I really appreciate it. Rachel, I thank you for bringing in the video <laughs> to, to get all this ball rolling. Uh, but I'm excited and you know, a lot of people want to ask you know, what your philosophy is going to be. Year to year it's going to be we're going to be a team. We're going to be a team that you can be proud of. Uh, the style of play changes year to year. You know, what type of players do you have? What, what's going to be your strengths, your weaknesses? What are you going to work towards? And, uh, and we, will, we will evolve every year so that we can stay competitive uh, and go out there and win. We will have a winning attitude um, and our expectations are to win. Obviously, I'm not gonna disrespect the SEC and how powerful it is, and we know that we have to do a lot of work to get to that point. You can't just sprinkle magic dust on it and say, hey, we're gonna win a national championship. A lot of work has to go into it, and we're willing to do that. And so, I would not be here if I did not think that this is a wonderful opportunity, and this is an extremely wonderful opportunity, not only for the program, but for me and my family. We're looking very forward to, to just being embraced by the community. Uh, I am a family man. It's very, very important to me uh, that my family is good, my family is okay, because that's what we're gonna spread throughout our program is family. And we're gonna make sure that we go out and we represent extremely well. So this is an honor for me. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited about the new possibilities and what we're gonna be able to do. Um, I, we're up for the challenge. You know, we're up for the challenge. We know it's not gonna be easy, but we need you. We need you, Big Blue Nation. We need your support, your passion, uh, in each and every way. Uh, I would ask for your opinions, but I'm sure you got a lot. You can, you can send them to Mitch. 
and I'm sure to get to me somehow. Um, but but you, you are a big part of what we're going to do, and we look forward to embracing you. And um, I'm very, very excited about this opportunity. So thank you very much. Come out, yell. Please try to reach out to us. Um, I think we're going to make you proud. You're going to be proud to be a Wildcat. Thanks, Coach Brooks. We'll open it up to Q&A. If you don't mind to raise your hand and we'll bring a mic to you, please speak into that mic and state your name and your outlet. And we'll go ahead and start with, um, raise your hands. We'll, go, we'll start with Larry Vaught. And then we'll go to Caroline next. Front row, black hat. start with evaluating who you've got, you talk to players and where you've been, you talk to players who are committed to you, you make them talk to you. Just kind of walk me through how the process would be putting your roster together. Well, I, I don't know if there's a blueprint uh, for today's um, roster construction or reconstruction, however you want to uh, call it. I'm looking forward to sitting down with the young ladies and, um, and just talk about a lot of different things, the expectations, uh, what they're looking for, um, just getting to know them. I know a few of them. I recruited a couple of them, I competed against a couple of them. Uh, we played <coughs> Kentucky, I think it was last year in the Bahamas. Uh, so very, very familiar with what they do. Um, and so just really just trying to align and see what their situations are. And um, I'm looking forward to that because I know there's a lot of potential there and a lot of potential. And, uh, and obviously, you know, this day and age right now, it, there's a lot of movement going on, you know, so I think it's very, very important that I sit in front of them and be able to talk to them very soon. Coach Caroline McCaskill, who's elected in your leader, curious to hear your perspective on NIL, hmm. how you plan to work with it, utilize it, what kind of conversations you've had with the administration in order to remain competitive in a league that has passed two national championships. Um, would you say we only had 30 minutes to talk? <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, NIL is uh, something that's very, very important. And, um, you know, I've had discussions, preliminary discussions, and, you know, been able to express the importance of NIL. Um, obviously, this league um, is uh, abundant with some teams with their NIL opportunities. And I think if you're going to be competitive, uh, you, you have to be in that category. You have to be in the ballpark. I don't know, I don't know if you have to be a leader uh, in the ballpark, but you have to be in the ballpark. And that's something that I think is very, very important. Um, it has burst onto the scene, you know, and it's kind of grown in the last couple of years. So trying to wrap your head around it, you know, I think we're going to have, you know, multiple discussions about that situation. Uh, but I think it's a necessity, I really do, uh, to be able to compete uh, in the best league in the country. And uh, that's where we're going to need a lot of people's support in a lot of different ways. And, um, and I, I think that as we continue to educate ourselves on NIL and what it actually is, uh, and not what it was perceived to be you know, a few years ago, I think it's changed. And I think the importance of it is, uh, is well documented now, and it's a necessity in order for you to be able to compete. So I'm looking forward to those conversations, um, but it is something that is, is at the high, high priority on our list. Hello, Coach. How are you? With College Sportscast. Your former AD, Virginia Tech AD, had some very high praise on you uh, about your player development. I was just wondering what set you apart for your player development? Um, you know, when I, when I was talking to Mitch early uh, in the process, um, I told him I will go out and I'll I'll kiss babies, I'll shake hands, and I'll, I'll do whatever you need me to do, but where I want to be is here. Uh, and and that's that's the most enjoyment that I get out of this is to be in the gym uh, with, our, with our young ladies. And uh, it's been the cornerstone of every program that I've had. And uh, everywhere we've been, we've been able to bring in young ladies who are willing and able to meet me halfway, you know, go, go above and beyond. And if so, you're gonna be able to reach your goals through hard work. Um, I've never coached a McDonald's All-American. And, uh, and you know, this past year we had two AP All-Americans on our team this year, and it was through lots of hard work. We had a three-time ACC Player of the Year, and I don't know if she was a top 50 recruit, and it's because of the hard work that she put in. And, uh, and that's been the cornerstone of, of our program is development. Uh, 
every coaching staff that I've had, we, we, we work tirelessly. And I don't think any time a kid is asked to come in the gym and work, we haven't been there. And that's, that comes from the top. And it's not just my assistants who do it, I'm there. And when I'm able to get out there with the kids and work, I know I'm older now and I can only do half court stuff. All right, I can't, I can't get up and down the floor, uh, but I think I'm a pretty good teacher of individual skills and their development. And so I'm down here with them, and it's not just a matter of, hey, I have an assistant coach out there doing the work. I'm there with them, and that helps build relationships. It helps build relationships, and I get to know them each and every day. Um, and you know, if you have kids, as long as you're around your children, they'll tell you anything you want to know. And so I think that really strengthens our relationships, our bond, our trust. And therefore, when our kids go out, they, uh, they play really hard. So that's been, a, that's been a staple, and it won't change. And I think that's the way that we can go out and compete. But also with the brand of Kentucky, I think you'll be able to recruit a higher level kid and to be able to take that and still build on it. And I think it's a recipe for success. Hey, Coach, John Fong, Nola Media. Welcome to Lexington. Thank First you. First of all, how would you like us to address you? Keen, no, uh, <laughs> great. However you like, I mean, uh, I've been known as Coach, if you say Coach Brooks, I'll turn around really, really quick. If you say Kenny, it might take a couple times to get me to go, but whatever you like. All right, Coach Don Staley has said on several occasions that Kentucky was a wonderful landing spot. Great facilities support, uh, fan base, tradition, and yet it hasn't had a whole lot of success if you measure it in terms of Final Fours and championships. Why do you think that is the case? You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know, and I know that there have been um, several coaches before me. Uh, Kyra, I, you know, I have the utmost respect for her and the job that she did. She's a terrific person. Uh, I've always supported her. She's always supported me. Uh, Matthew Mitchell, um, I've actually played, I coached one game in Memorial and it was against uh, Kentucky and it was in the WNIT and I know they had, you know, some success back then. Um, I just know what it can be and uh, I'll, I'll agree with Dawn and I, I think the city, everything that I hear, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the city because everything that I hear, it's a wonderful city, uh, passionate fans uh, and, you know, just with all what the resources waiting to burst where you can capitalize on it. Now, it's a very tough league, and a very tough league, and I understand that, but I think that if we get in and we put in the work, the sky's the limit. No one thought we were going to go to the Final Four of Virginia Tech. You know, the first year I was there, we were preseason 14th in the ACC. And uh, I kind of stuck my foot in my mouth. I thought, and I said, you know, if Syracuse can go to the Final Four, why can't we? And the whole place erupted, and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we got there. We got there with a lot of hard work and uh, countless hours in the gym, and when people counted us out, I think this is a, a sleeping giant. It's a great opportunity, you know, and I, if, it, if it weren't, I wouldn't be here. And so I'm looking forward to, you know, getting in and hard work. Um, I'm gonna be knocking on everybody's door uh, to just make sure that we get the support that we need, uh, because if so, I think this can be a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Yeah, there they were, they were a number of reasons. Obviously, uh, in, at Virginia Tech, being in Blacksburg, you know, very, very comfortable. Uh, just coming off of a, a Final Four appearance, ACC championship. We won the ACC regular season this year. Uh, we had, I think we had eight or nine sellouts in a 9,000-seat arena. And, you know, that's, you know, that's living pretty well in women's basketball. And, um, and this situation came, and you know, to be honest with you, the, the, the landscape of college athletics is changing. And with the leadership of, of the SEC and uh, where it's going alongside with the Big Ten, um, you, know, you kind of want to align yourself to be able to compete at the highest level year in and year out. And uh, so I looked into all those factors and um, you know, just everything that it presented, the resources that it, to be able to go out and compete consistently, um, and I just thought that it, it was in my gut, it was the right move. You know, I talked with my wife extensively about the situation, uh, my family, because, you know, they, uh, they're most important to me and they were on board. And, um, and so I just thought it was a great opportunity. You know, I, I, it, it's going to take something that's going to be ex extremely special for me to move. And I thought this was a great opportunity. 
uh, Dylan Ballard to see a blue. Coach Brooks, you, we saw Coach Calipari posted that he met you in the hallway earlier. How was that conversation with him? You, you've talked about needing support from people. He said he would give you his in that area. Have you, well, how was that conversation? And then have you heard from any of the other coaches around the athletic department yet? No, uh, just briefly. I think I've met everybody but no one because I, I haven't been able to keep it all in yet. Um, I'm looking forward to coming around for round two and uh, so I can get you know, in depth. But obviously, Coach Cal, it's the first time that I've ever met Coach Cal. I used to be uh, an assistant coach on the men's side for 10 years. And so I know Bruiser Flint extremely well. I know Orlando, I know those guys. So it's good catching up with them. Uh, but just the interaction with Cal, you know, I'm, I'm gonna lean on him. And, um, you, know, I, you know, we do have, you know, newspapers, you know, everywhere, Blacksburg, and I know there's been a lot going on uh, with Coach Cal and the situation, but he's one of the best, one of the best in the country. And I'm looking forward to picking his brain, anything and everything about Kentucky basketball. Because when I talk, when we talk Kentucky basketball, um, it's an umbrella that you want to be under. It, it, it's a brand, and I'm looking forward to capitalizing on it. And in any any sport that we're successful in here at Kentucky, you want to piggyback off of that because just great, great exposure. So I'm looking forward to that. But um, Coach Cal, you know, it was a brief, brief uh, discussion, introduction, and I'm looking forward to picking his brain more. Coach Tonya Witt, Rise Up Sports Media. You built a really um, strong fan base for women's basketball at Virginia Tech. What's your first order of business to do that, to build a strong uh, fan base for women's basketball at Kentucky? Well, obviously, you know, constructing, you know, the rest of the roster and, um, and just bringing in young ladies who uh, bleed Kentucky Wildcat basketball. You know, I think you have to understand what you're representing and you're representing the, the name on the front. And when you can do that, the pride will seek out and everyone will be – uh, attracted to that and uh, we're looking forward to that and you have to get you know great great players to make a great team um, but I think you have to champion for the cause and when I was at Virginia Tech every chance I got uh, I was talking about the opportunities that they deserved uh, I'm, I'm a father of three daughters and I've often said you know being a father of three daughters I wonder if it's made me a pretty good women's basketball coach or being a women's basketball coach has made me a pretty good father of three daughters mm -hmm. either way it goes hand in hand and, uh, you know, I understand them, I respect them. Uh, I want to tool them so they can be ready to take over, you know, because I've often said, I've coached on the boys' side, I've coached on the girls' side, and it's, girls are smarter. <laughs> and and, and uh, I've had opportunities to go back. I've had overtures to go back on the, on the men's side, and I, and I didn't want to because I think this game is special. And, uh, and you know, for any of the, the Internet trolls who want to say women's basketball is not as exciting, uh, you're not watching the right games. You know, and so I'm looking forward to continuing that here uh, because that is, that is a, a cause of mine. I, I want them to really have every opportunity that they can, you know, just like their counterparts. And, uh, and we, we preached it, we talked it, we lived it, we ate, we slept it at Virginia Tech. And uh, as a result, we were selling out, you know, buildings with passionate crowds and the girls were able to reap the benefits and get the things that they deserved. Uh, Ryan Black, the Louisville Courier Journal. Kenny, you, you mentioned in your opening statement that, that you're not locked into one style offensively or defensively that you would evolve based on personnel. Have, have you always been that flexible, or has this kind of been forced upon you because of just the unbelievable roster movement and the transfer portal? No, I've always been that way. Uh, one of the very first players that I coached was named Tamara Young, and she was a six foot two wing who ended up being from James Madison, being the seventh pick in the draft. Um, and then from there, I went to a young lady named Dawn Evans, who was a point guard. You know, she was a five foot six, nothing, but averaged 26 points a game. You know, I go to Virginia Tech, and my first year, we don't have a, a center and playing in the ACC, we had to play small ball. And then I recruit a six foot six center who becomes an All-American, so that obviously we're gonna throw the ball inside, you know, every chance we get. Um, and so it just evolves, and I think you have to evolve as a coach and uh, now I think that I'll be able to select the type of player more uh, frequently that I want and not have to just surprisingly get one. Um, and so then you will have more consistency. Um, but I'd be a fool if I had a six foot six All-American and we were still jacking up threes the only way we were going to play. Um, or if we were playing small ball and I try to throw the ball inside every time. You know, so it's just an evolution of, of your roster and what you're going to do. Um, but, you know, that keeps you on your toes. But obviously in this landscape right now with ever-changing rosters, you do have to be uh, ready and flexible to move that way. Can 
Jimmy Martin story from the Lexington Herald Leader. So Whit Babcock told the media in Virginia, you were really excited about the renovated Memorial Coliseum. How excited are you and what kind of impact is that going to have on this program? I'm not sure I would be here if it weren't, mm -hmm. you know, because in this day and age, you know, it matters. You know, it really does. You know, it's an arms race sometimes, you know, with facilities. And, um, and, and you have to have something really nice to be able to lure them in. But I'm a firm believer it's not necessarily, you know, the building. It's what's in the building. And, uh, but we need to be able to attract it. And I uh, kind of equate it. I use the analogy that when you, go, when you go to buy a home and you walk into the new home, you're looking at every nook and cranny. You're looking at do they have crown molding? What's the hardwood? Is it, is it carpet? But after a month you don't even recognize that crown molding anymore. And what's inside the building is your family and how, what, what memories are you creating? And, uh, and, and that's something that we'll always continue to stress. It's not the building, it's what's in the building. And you know, we wanna put in a situation where these young ladies are gonna be able to come and uh, it's not just about basketball, it's about life. Uh, we are educators. You know, and I know sometimes the business part of it gets, you know, makes it a little foggy, uh, but it is my responsibility to educate these, these student athletes so that they can go on because what they're doing right now, they're preparing these four years, some who have five, uh, for the next 40, 50 years of their life. And what they determine here and how they get their work ethic is going to carry over to how they live the next 40 or 50 years of their life. So that's the most important thing, but it was important for me to have something to be able to attract that type of a uh, player in here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm very fortunate. I've had nine assistant coaches go on to be head coaches, and uh, that's something that's very, very impressive to me. Just because we want we want to recruit. Not, and when you go out and you're trying to recruit players, you know you want people who are going to represent your program and make you proud. Um, coaching is the same thing. You know, you want to get people in who are willing to sacrifice for the team. And, you know, they got ten toes down. They're not worried about, okay, hey, I'm trying to get a job. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to, I'm going to abide by the philosophy and spread it, spread that philosophy throughout. We're going to live it so that I'm not going to be around all the time, but to have trustworthy assistants who are going to really share the same message. Um, I think that's extremely important. But it was a really cool moment uh, on the ticker the other night. Uh, Sean Poppy was my assistant coach for four years at Virginia Tech. Uh, he's heading down the head coach at Clemson. And uh, back to back, it says Kenny Brooks, you know, head coach at Kentucky. And then the next one says Sean Poppy, the head coach at Clemson. And uh, announced on the same day. So that's a pretty cool moment. But, you know, I've, I've always had great people around me uh, who, are, who share the same philosophies. They spread it uh, with the same message. And, uh, and that's how we've had that success with people going on. And I think that has trickled down to the success of our programs throughout uh, my tenure. You mentioned academics, and not only did you mention it, you mentioned it first, that guy sitting beside you feels real, real strongly about that. Did he make you say that? <laughs> no, he did not. No, how, he did not. How do you feel academics fits in to the world of, of college basketball? Well, my wife, who sits there, is, is an educator. She's a teacher. Uh, so when we play, Je when we watch Jeopardy, she kicks my butt uh, in Jeopardy, unless the sports part comes on. And, uh, but, you know, at, at Virginia Tech, you know, it was something that was extremely important to me. And I think our last four or five um, semesters, our kids had, uh, I think, an average of a 3.6 GPA. And, uh, and I think a lot of it has to do that when we recruit young ladies, we, we stress that, you know, that's something that's going to be very important to us because, again, you're, equip, you're equipping yourself with tools right now and you have to get your degree. And, uh, and it's, not just, it's not just the actual GPA, all right? We want you to, to really go and impress yourself so that you can be great. If, if you're a, a 2.8, student, we want you to work harder so that you're a 3.3 student, and therefore that's a work ethic that you're developing. And so we're very, very serious about it. We talk about it. Um, we have meetings constantly about it, and it's, no one's just going to slip by, you know, because I think that's really a, a weapon that you're going to take with you out into the world you're developing, and that's what's extremely important to us.
So you played for the Hall of Fame coach, I did. Lefty Giselle. And I was just wondering, is there anything about your coaching style or that you have taken from Lefty's coaching abilities? Uh, uh, almost everything except for his demeanor. <laughs> he, was a, he was a stomper. And I remember when I first started playing for Lefty, um, he would call me and he would say, Kenny, and he would do like this. And I would run over there and in front of 6,000 people, he would rip me for about <laughs> three or four, five, 10 seconds, felt like a minute. And um, probably about midway through the year, he was stomping and he would call me over and uh, I was ignoring him. And, uh, and my teammates would go, coach is calling you. I say, I hear him. <laughs> And, uh, but I'm not going over there. <laughs> but seriously, that, that man did so much for me. He did so much for me. Gave me my first job coaching. My interview went just like this. He said, called me, he says, Kenny, you wanna coach? I said, yes, sir. He said, be here Monday. So that was my first interview. And I got there and I learned so much about the game, uh, the game within the game. When I played for him, I thought he was crazy. I really did. And I didn't know what he was doing to me. Um, and then I learned he wasn't doing anything to me. He was doing it for me. He taught me how to be a man. He taught me how to be a husband. He taught me how to be a father. Uh, he taught me how that you incorporated it all into a program to be successful because he had his wife who he loved dearly. His family was always around. And uh, as I started to become a head coach, I wanted my family around. And so many people told me, you can't have your family around as much. They're a distraction. And I watched him do it. I watched him hug on his wife, kiss on his wife. I saw him bring his family into everything. And that's what I've been able to take away the most um, from that. And he's, he, he was special. Um, I love him. You know, he passed away not too long ago. And uh, you know, it really hurt, but it, but it made me you know, recollect on what he meant to me. And uh, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for him. I wouldn't have the style today if it weren't for him. And I owe him so much. And, um, and I, I was able to tell him that before he passed. And after we went to the Final Four, he called me and he was so proud. And, uh, and when he got inducted into the Hall of Fame, he had a situation and he said um, he was going and he was killing it. He, would, he had the whole place laughing. And he said, I have two uh, former players who are now head coaches. And then he paused and I was like, he's about to say my name. He's about to say my name on the biggest stand in, in basketball. And he didn't. <laughs> and then I called him and I called him, you know, a week or two later and I congratulated him. And uh, he said, Kenny, he said, I meant to say your name uh, in my speech, but I forgot. And I said, you know what, coach, I knew who you were talking about. That's all I meant. And uh, so forever, in, you know, indebted to that man and what he did for me. And um, I have I have two pictures in my office that I will bring here. One was, a, one was a picture of me and him, and one was just a letter. It was so simple after the final four, and he said, great job. Okay. Coach, can you talk a little bit about your philosophy on in-state recruiting? There's a pretty potent junior class here in Kentucky right now that maybe doesn't have Kentucky on their final list right now. How do you kind of approach in-state recruiting? You know, um, like I said, when you, when you think about Kentucky, you think about basketball. And uh, we, we definitely understand the importance of keeping uh, in-state players at home. But we also understand the importance of fit. And so we'll look at all of it and make sure that it's going to be a great fit because sometimes uh, situations, like some kids just want to get away. You know, we, we've encountered that in the state of Virginia, you know, where we've uh, recruited. Um, and we want to make sure everything's going to be a good fit. But we know it's a, it's a rich country with basketball um, and we, we definitely are aware uh, of the young ladies. We've actually um, been recruiting some of the young ladies uh, to the point that uh, we've had conversations. So we understand the importance of it and that's going to be a priority for us. Uh, but it's also going to be very important that we make sure everything is a really good fit for our program. Thank you guys very much. I look forward to seeing all of you out.